If you keep your mind in a certain way, the amount of extra energy that you have is enormous. Within three days we can teach you a simple form of meditation, which will bring down your metabolism by approximately twenty-four percent. If you sit here, you have no sense of body. It is from this that a yogi is sitting. Sadhguru, we have heard many stories of people who enter into a deep state of meditation and uh, they forego basic human necessities like thirst and hunger for several months together. But science says that a person can die within ten days of not drinking water. So can you please explain us how such a state of metabolism can be attained? For this you will have to bend your mind a little bit because it's not in your textbook like this. Just day before yesterday, somebody sent me a message from the yoga center. There is something called as Jnana Linga. This happens very often, but this happened to a foreign national, so the message came to me, little concerned. So this person went and sat in Jnana Linga at seven o'clock in the morning, because everybody gets only a fifteen-minute slot to sit there because of the number of people. She sat there at seven o'clock in the morning. She did not move till three p.m. How many hours is that? Three plus uh, eight hours. She just sat there unmoving. She didn't realize that she's sitting that long. She thought she's going to sit for a fifteen-minute slot. So they sent a message to me, Sadhguru, like this, she's not moved, should we disturb her? I said, leave her alone, it's okay. Like this it happens, once it happened, I sat down way back. I thought, this was new to me also at that time, I thought I'm going to… you know, I sat there for twenty-five, thirty minutes. When I opened my eyes, a huge crowd in front of me in a village, garlands around my neck, they're all trying to pull my legs, you know, in India, <laughs> India being what it is. And the moment I open my eyes, somebody wants to know about his business, somebody wants to know when his daughters will get married, all kinds of things. Then I say, where did all you idiots come from? <laughs> they say, you've been sitting here for thirteen days. And <laughs> so, what happens in the system, that's what you're asking. See, right now, I am speaking, if you check my pulse, it's somewhere around fifty-five, fifty-eight in that region. If I simply sit quietly, it'll drop below forty. If I simply sit down and I am doing something without interaction, talking, moving, if I simply sit, it'll drop below forty. Now this is at ease. This will not build any unnecessary friction inside. So the amount of energy it consumes is very low. You… all of your medical students, you know this, twenty percent of the energy in the body is consumed by your brain. Though it is hardly a pound and a half at the most. So this much body is consuming twenty percent of the energy. This much body is consuming only eighty percent. If you compare this and this in weight, what, it's fifty times more, much more. So, you must understand, if you keep your mind in a certain way, the amount of extra energy that you have is enormous because you're not unnecessarily consuming wasteful usage of energy is not happening. This is true with every system whether it's a car, whether it's a machine, whether it's anything, how friction-free it is running, that much energy will come down, isn't it? Anything that's happening with big friction will consume enormous amount of energy. So physiologically, psychologically, energy-wise, if you bring friction-free function of your system, metabolism will drop and you will function very efficiently because when you want to pitch it up, you have a whole range to pitch it up. 
when you want to lower it, it's there. Right now the range that most people are carrying is very, very small. If you push them into activity, they will get totally tired out. If you don't, if they have nothing to do, they will freak. If you have nothing to do, you freak, isn't it? So in this condition, it will not go down. Now, everything that you consume is higher simply because you are at a higher RPM, that's all. We can… within three days we can teach you a simple form of meditation, which will bring down your metabolism by approximately twenty-four percent. This is the highest drop that you can have in conscious states of meditativeness. If metabolism drops beyond that, you will not have any sense of body. If you sit here, you have no sense of body. It is from this that a yogi is sitting. See, if you sit down here, even if you don't have a watch, your legs, your back, your bottom, everything is keeping time, isn't it? Hello? <laughs> you don't need a watch. If you sit here for three hours, you know you need to get up. Body knows. So, someone is sitting for hours or days because there is no sense of body. Why there is no sense of body is not only because of drop in metabolism, it is also the intensity of your energy which is not biological energy. Another dimension of energy is fully intense. Once it pervades the entire body, you have no sense of body. If I go into your program ten hours, twelve hours, I am the only one, I am the only one continuously drinking water, but I am the only one who will not go to the restroom. I am the only one who will not take a break. Everybody, every two hours they take a break and come back. Simply because how identified you are with your physiological process determines these things to start with. But there is also sadhana, there is also certain work to be done with your system. So everybody may not be willing to do that level of sadhana, but everybody must do some sadhana, something so that what you wish to do, you can do effectively. Whatever it is in your life you wish to do, you must be able to do it as well as you can. What the hell you do is not my concern, but whatever the hell you're doing, you must do it well, isn't it? Hello? You must do it well. That's very important for a human being, that we must do it well. So for this, it's very, very important that your own body and your own mind is not an impediment. Your own body and your own mind doesn't trip you all the time. They must be platforms on which you stand. Right now, people have sunk into it. See, this is a platform, it's good. Suppose it lets you sink into it, it's not a good place to sit and talk, isn't it? It's holding us up, so it's nice. Your body, your mind should hold you up all the time. If that happens, your dependence on the outside will come down. And also, water is not always consumed through the mouth. Body consumes water in so many ways. If you activate the system in a certain way, it consumes energy. See, right now you're eating food, drinking water, breathing air, everything for what? To generate energy. But science has clearly proved to you there's enough energy everywhere. So if you are able to take in energy as it is, if you are able to imbibe energy, how is this possible? The word yoga means just this. The word yoga means you are beginning to obliterate the boundaries of your individuality. Right now, this is me, that's you, hundred percent clear, isn't it? Why? Because you think this body is me, that body is you. This is a clear boundary. The my body and your body has a clear boundary. My mind and your mind also largely has a boundary here and there, we may overlap a little bit. But there is no such thing as my life and your life. Have you ever blown soap bubbles or were you a serious boy even when you were in school? No. <laughs> Did you blow soap bubbles? Let's say we sit here and blow soap bubbles. You got this big bubble, I got that big bubble. Now I say, this is my bubble, that little one is yours, this is my bubble. 
Oop, it went. Now I don't say this is my air, that is your air. Life is just like this. This is a living cosmos. You captured some, I captured some. How much you capture will determine the significance and the quality of your existence. I want you to understand this clearly. How much of life have you captured will determine this. You may have a big brain, you may have a huge intellect, you may have a lot of knowledge, but you will not still live a significant life. Only if you capture a lot of life, if you are a big bubble, then it's significant. If you have a big body, other people may look at you and say he's very big, but within you, that will not be the experience. If you have a big brain, people think, oh, he is very smart, but within you, you will not have a significant life. Only if you capture a huge amount of life within you, then if you sit here, simply if you sit here also, it's too fantastic. When it's like that, whether you open your eyes, close your eyes, whether you do something, you don't do something, it doesn't really make a difference to you. Only then, you will live in the world as not being a vested interest because what you do and do not do, what happens to you and does not happen to you, does not depend… determine the quality of your life. That is when we can really trust you, isn't it? Otherwise, we don't know why you're doing the surgery. I mean, these question marks have come, isn't it? Can I tell you a joke? A man went for a surgery, he needed a surgery, so he went to the doctor. Doctor said, uh, this is in the United States, so doctor said it'll cost you thirty-six thousand dollars. Then uh, he said, uh, doctor, I cannot pay that, I don't have insurance. Then doctor said, don't worry, you pay three thousand per month. The patient said, but that looks like… like a car payment, you know, installment to buy a car. The doctor smiled and said, yes, I am buying a car. <laughs>